So good day, my dear professional students. You're welcome again to our past question series on financial reporting. Today, we'll be looking at a question from I can May 2016 diet. And in line with our practice, I always advise you that whenever you're solving a question, the first thing you need to do is for you to look at the requirement of that question. And which is what we are going to do here first. So we will look at the requirement of this question. To know and understand what this question is asking us to do. And here is the requirement of the question. The question is asking us to prepare a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended December 31st, 2015. And the B is asking us to prepare a statement of financial position as of December 31st, 2015 in accordance with international financial reporting standards. Having read the requirement of this question, now let's read through the question for our first reading. Then we go over it again before we start picking the important points. So this question was about Gengan IG PLC travel balance as at December 31st, 2015 is shown below. So we were given a travel balance. And this travel balance, it must balance because the travel balance are extract or list of ledger balances. Like I told you in the previous question, that items in the trial balance are items whose double entry has been passed. They have already passed the double entry. All you need to do there is for you to now present it in the statement. And it's important to present or touch each of these items before your statement of financial position will jive. And it is important that this trial balance balances. If they do not balance, it will affect one or two items in your statements. Now, let's go through the additional information together. So, what's the additional information we're talking about? It says that a gain of 20,000 made on the revaluation of old field property during the year is yet to be accounted for. So, we need to account for it. Also, we're told the inventories at December 31st, 2015 were we're given raw materials, finished goods, and work in progress. And also, we're given legal and professional expenses that it includes solicitor's fees for purchase of new free old land during the year for 7500 Okay? We'll come back and explain all of this. Also, we're told that provision is to, is to be made for the full year's interest on the loan notes, okay? Also, we're told that the lease old land and buildings are held on 50 years lease with 40 years unexpired life as at the end of December 31st, 2014. Okay? Depreciation for the year is to be charged as follows. We are given plant and equipment, 8% on cost, should be charged to production. We are given furniture and fittings, 10% on cost, to be charged on administration. That means these two uses straight line method. They were given that motor vehicles, 20% on carrying amount. We should charge 25% to admin and we should charge 75% to selling and distribution. Okay. So that means motor vehicle uses reducing balance basis. Okay. Now, note 7. Note 7 states that income tax on the profit for the year is estimated at 68900 and is due for payment on February 28, 2016. Furthermore, we were told that dividend of 2 naira 25 cobo per ordinary share capital is recommended for payment by the directors and no dividend was paid in the previous financial year. 
Now we are required that we should prepare the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended December 31st, 2015. And also we are required to prepare a statement of financial position as of December 31st, 2015 in accordance with IFRS for 30 marks. Okay, now we have gone through the correction. So let's start picking our points carefully. Now this is the trial balance, okay? We will be referring to them. But let's sort out this note first. Starting with note 1. What is note 1 saying? It says a gain of 20,000 made on a revaluation of old free old property during the year is yet to be accounted for. So there is a revaluation surplus because it is a gain on revaluation on a free old property. And I'm sure you know what free old property is. Free old property is the property we acquired on our own. We did not lease it. We acquired it. So they refer to it as a free old property. So let's go and account for it because it has not been accounted for. So when we have a revaluation surplus, how do we account for a revaluation surplus? Then that will be our workings one. So let me put my workings here. Workings. So the workings one is that there was a revaluation surplus. There was a revaluation surplus on a free old property. Okay? On a free old property. And we're given the revaluation surplus as 20,000. So when you have revaluation surplus, you're going to credit the revaluation surplus account to the extent that there is no previous deficit. This will go to the other comprehensive income. Then the other leg is a debit to the free old property. Is a debit to where? To the free old property. So that is how a revaluation surplus is treated. So we have accounted for it. So when we are preparing our statement, we have to remember to reflect it in the existing figures in the trial balance. Okay. So let's move on to note two. Now. Note 2 gave us inventories at December 31st, 2015 were as follows. And these inventories were broken down into raw materials, finished goods, and work in progress. The breakdown of this inventory shows that this entity would be a manufacturing entity. Since the component or one of the components of its inventory is raw materials, so it is a manufacturing entity. Ordinarily, all we need is just the summation of this tree. Okay? So we don't need to go and write that again so that we'll be duplicating effort. Now, let's look at note 3. Note 3 states that legal and professional expenses include solicitor's fees for purchase of new free old land during the year for 7,500. Now, whenever there is a legal fee, that is incurred on the purchase or acquisition of an item of property, plant, and equipment. IS 16 states that such expense should be capitalized as part of the cost of that asset. And that's the scenario here. There was a legal fee or legal fee on the acquisition of a free old land. And we incurred 7,500. Such legal fee has to be capitalized as part of the cost of that free old land. Hence, we need to remember to add this to the free old land and remove it from the legal and professional expenses. I need to know that down as my workings too. So that is capitalization of legal fee. And it's 7,500 
So what we would do, we would deduct it from the legal fee given in the trial balance, deduct from the legal fee, then you add it to the free old land. You add it to the free old land because it was on the free old land. Okay, so that is sorted. So let's go to the next notes and that's note four. Now, what's that note saying? The note is saying that provision is to be made for the full year's interest on the loan notes. If you look at the trial balance, there was a loan note, a 10% loan note. And since it is a liability with a fixed interest of 10%, that goes to show that we need to make an accrual for that interest at the end of every reporting period. And this is what this point is telling us to do, that we should make a provision for the full year's interest on the loan notes. So let's make that provision. Through accruals for interest on loan notes, which is simply be 10% on the Nominal value of the loan notes, which is 150,000. So that will be note 3. Provision for interest or accruals. Let me call it accruals for interest or finance costs. Accruals for interest. And that will be 10% multiplied by 150,000. 150,000 and that's 15,000 and that's 15,000. So we're going to add it as accrued interest. Accrued interest. And in the statement of profit or loss, we have a finance cost or an interest expense. Okay, in the statement of profit or loss. So that's noted. Okay. Now, the note 5, note 6, note 7, and note 8, we'll take care of those in the next video. So thank you very much. See you in the next video.